Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> hey, I love Jim, you. Right Jim, do you feel remorse for your crime? Oh, yes. Believe me, my God. If I could turn back the clock on my mother's stair pushing, I would certainly reconsider it. Drenerick, uh, what do you think of Homer Simpson? I think he's a good man. I like him. I got nothing against him, but I'm definitely going to make orphans of his children. Uh, you know, they do have a mother, champ. Yes, but I would imagine that she would die of grief. Drenerick, over here. Everyone remembers where they were on 9-11. And I remember where I was when I saw Two Girls, One Cup. It's, it was my 9-11. It's a, it's a poor man's 9-11. Rudy, you were such a fun guy. Like, where, where did it all go wrong? And I tell him, 2G1C, video involving uh, two girls and a cup. I watched 2G1C in the night. I broke up with my girlfriend at the time. I was like, do you, do you eat, do girls eat? I was a kid, I didn't know. On God, Anthony, niggas don't remember. 2G1C fucked us up. A lot of motherfuckers right now, they like, what you talking about? What is, what is 2G1C? If you wasn't there... Just shut the fuck up, bro. Because we was fucked up about that shit for a minute. I ain't going to lie. I remember exactly where I was. You talking about 9-11? No, we talking about 2G1C. Two girls, one cup. I'm going to let you figure that shit out. I'm not even finna dig in no files. I'm not finna... No. You go ahead. Roll them fucking dice on Jumanji. And we'll see your ass later. Want to open a college bookstore? Are the books going to be reasonably priced? Not at all. Mm, fantastic. I was thinking like 100 to $300. Is that for multiple books? For one book. Amazing. And will you sell only books? No, it's going to be a lot of merch. It's going to be more of a merch store that dabbles in books. And the merch will also be... Insanely expensive, yes. $90 for like a polo shirt that just says college on it. To help the students, they could rent the book for cheaper. How much cheaper? Like they buy it, it's $100. They rent it. $90. Say I'm a student. Ew. And I need this required book for my class. Don't have it. Should have come three months ago. Three months ago was last semester. I wasn't even in the class. Too bad, f face. That's $20 for loitering in my store. Check it. The students can sell the books back. For? For no money. Correct. Can we get those professors writing those books, I'm assuming? Yeah, the professors write the books, and then they make the students buy it for the required for the class. It's yeah, a real no. racket. A lot of our sales are going to be parents on campus tours with their kids. We're going to have a lot of candy for some reason. Is this a scam? Are we scamming the kids here? No. Yes, of course it is. Happy, hey. happy first half there. All right, guys. So for the next Batman movie, we've got Riddler as the main villain. Any other characters that we want to add? Yeah. Uh, how about we add the penguin? Awesome. Great idea. Oswald Cobblepot, an English esteemed mob owner of the Iceberg Lounge. Yeah, but instead of him being English, hear me out. We give him the... The Gabagool. Gabagool? What, you mean like an Italian mobster? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, give him the, uh... Hey, I'm walking in! Okay, interesting. Do you have any inspiration for this character? Yeah, you know, I figure we make him the Tony Soprano of DC. I think it works. Tony Soprano? Yeah, because, you know, he's always singing with the Maronis and the Falcons. Italian mob bosses... Anyways, you know, Gotham City set in New Jersey, according to the comics. That actually makes sense. Yeah, of course it makes sense. Even better, we give him his own show. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he's cooking with this idea. I say we go for it. It could be worse. It could be a trash musical about one of the most iconic villains in media. <laughs> what studio would make that? That sounds awful. <laughs> We've all heard of mansplaining, but allow me to introduce you to she elaborating. It is when you ask a woman a very, very simple question and she sits you down and gives you a 30 minute answer. Men are a lot like tortillas. In my estimation, the silent backbone of Mexican cuisine. Sure, a lot of the spotlight is given to the pollo, the poblano, or grilled onions. But who is really the one holding that taco together? Sadly, uh, nobody wants a plain tortilla by itself. As a tortilla, we're only valued by what we bring wrapped up in us. A nice job, good looks. Carne asada. In this way, we overburden ourselves. Too many ingredients can break a tortilla, to shatter into pieces. But you throw those pieces in a fire, and you watch that we don't come back as tortilla chips. Suddenly, we've got a crunch, an edge, a strength. Dip in wherever we please. Sure, it's not all nachos and sopapillas. Some of us might get lost in the salsa. Nobody wants a chip that doesn't come with a bag. But as long as we get that bag and continue to secure it with a chip clip. We'll be enjoyed for weekends to come. Women are guac-
all we do is do a fun honor guy. Yeah, CVS, Target, it, uh, until next year, right? I'll send them in. Christmas, they're ready for you, buddy. <sighs> Showtime. Wait, no, no, I'm, I'm next. Who, who the hell is this guy? I'm Thanksgiving, the last Thursday of November. I'm clearly before Christmas. Oh, yeah, 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 the Thanksgiving, right? With the, uh, with the, the yams and shit, right? Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Well, then where's your festive jacket to let the audience know you represent Thanksgiving? They don't make one. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. Look, it's nothing personal. They're, they're just cutting you out, okay? You're cutting me out? Why? Oh, my God, this guy sucks. Come on, man. With me, you get candy girls and slutty costumes. Do I even have to mention what you get with this guy? Yeah, yeah, but with me, you, you get to... Watch football and fall asleep with your uncle on the couch. Guy, people don't even get the day off for your holiday anymore. They trample people at Best Buy to get to me. You want to take this outside? Fellas, fellas, look, relax. Okay, look, Thanksgiving, that's it. I'm sorry. <sighs> Besides, don't you have some college kids you have to offend? <laughs> oh, I hate this fucking song. <laughs> Just in, a recent study has proven that 100% of me doesn't give a fuck. Let me ask you something. When you come in on Monday and you're not feeling real well, does anyone ever say to you, sounds like someone has a case of the Mondays? No. No, man. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. Studios in Ontario, California. It's the Film Bar Show. Hey, what is up, everyone? I am Joe C. And I'm Steph. Thank you all so very much for listening into the Blue Bar Show. And a special thanks to you, please to subscribe, rate, review, and share the pod with your fellow foods. Remember to follow, like, and comment on our Instagram and TikTok at Foo Bar Show. That's F double O Bar Show. And listen at F double O Bar Show dot com. And we'll food up like a couple of foos. Ain't that right, Steph? That's right. Steph, today's going to be a good one. You all know why? Why? Because Thanksgiving's upon us. We've got a lot of Thanksgiving talk to uh, discuss. We've got uh, we've got some things uh, that are going down mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Uh, geekdom. And we're going to talk about it. But uh, what's up, man? What's up with you, Steph? How have you been? Uh, you know, just chilling. Just waiting for uh, some Friendsgiving. And, uh, oh, yeah, we got a bunch of people coming over um, that aren't family members. Thank God. Right, and actually look forward to that a little bit more than the regular Thanksgiving. Because <laughs> <laughs> regular Thanksgiving is really just like any gathering that we have with our parents. Well, it's just, I feel like our parents come over and it's just, they're just so in a rush to just eat and leave. So we spend all morning cooking and they're only here for like an hour and a half. And it's like, goodbye. See you next year. I find nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, it has its, it has its ups and downs. <laughs> you're like I, you're I, saying it like it's a bad thing, Steph. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, when we're spending six plus hours in the kitchen for yeah. like, you know, maybe 20 minutes worth of eating. Yeah, I get Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get yeah. it. Well, when was it when we were, uh, when I just threw on Godzilla minus one and everybody just shut up and watched the movie? That was, I think. Think? Was that Father's Day? I think that was Father's Day. That was awesome. This year. Can we just do that again? Yeah. And then you had put it in Spanish for your parents? Yeah, I put it in Spanish for my parents and the English subtitles for your parents. Because the thing is in Japanese anyway. Right. So like, the, <laughs> who the fuck? And then, um, yeah, everybody was enjoying it. Yeah. Because it's a good movie. It's, it's a really good movie. So let's get another foreign movie. Let's find a foreign movie that's really good. And we could do the exact same thing all over again. Okay. Well, later on, we will be talking about movies that you can watch. So, you oh. might have some options. All, all right. Okay. I hope it's not the one on your screen right now. No, we'll get to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Steph, I've had a bad weekend. Why? Why? <laughs> I've had a, I've had Why? a bad weekend. It's, it's, it's been rough. Um, all right. So, a lot, a lot of it was good. A lot of it was good. And uh, let this let this just kind of be a warning to everybody out there. Um, uh, it, it's going to be a very special episode of the Food Bar Show right now because I'll, I'll say, you know, on Thursday, I played a show in Hollywood, not with my regular band, but with uh, a few coworkers. We, we all get together and we play shows like twice a year and uh, for the company that we work for. And, um, and that was all fun. But then at a certain point, 
during the night, I don't recall what happened where I am woken up in the gutter of our street, just a couple of houses down by the police. And, um, and they, they thought I was dead, I guess. Uh, it, 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 all signs point to me getting roofied. Yeah. Would you say? It was a very scary experience. Yeah. I, uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, and, and, you know, as a guy, my, I don't have my guard up like a lot of women are trained to be from a very young age. Um, you know, I, I, I told a few, uh, female coworkers what happened to me and they're, they're just like, yeah, you don't take, you don't take drinks from people you don't know, which is what I did. Uh, when I was on stage, somebody handed me a, a rocks glass full of supposedly vodka, pineapple, maybe something else in there likely something else in there and then at a certain point in the night i just was lights out and so my boss put me in an uber uh he, he i thanked them up and down for that and then the uber guy i guess just just did what he had to do he took me out of the car and he kind of just left me outside of what he thought was my house uh he was just a couple of houses off but um, I don't know. I can only imagine that maybe a half an hour to an hour went by and then somebody called the cops and then they woke me up. Uh, but I guess, you know, you're in the medical field, Steph, and you had the, uh, you know, you asked a few of your nurse friends right. uh, what the symptoms were and they said, oh, yeah, it looks like like that. So j tell us about that. So what I noticed from you, I've known you for the better part of 20 years. I know what you look like drunk. Yeah. This was not it. I mean, definitely some uh, alcohol consumption because I can smell it on your breath. Well, and I'll say this. I wasn't going hard. And I know that I, I know people find that hard to believe. But you got to remember, I and I haven't said this yet, um, but I was going to have a show on Thursday uh, in Hollywood and a show, uh, a, a work related event show. Uh, performance on Friday. So I was taking it easy on Thursday so that I would still be able to go to work and then make that work event on Friday. Mm -hmm. So that's why like nothing else adds up and it only points to this. So sorry, go ahead. Right. When like, and then, of course, you know, the cops are knocking at the door and I see him standing there. It's like, that's really weird. Um, then I find out like, uh, I guess you were dropped off i get the cops figured out that you had gotten an uber they probably looked through your phone you know unlocked it with your face or something like that uh no i showed them oh you did i remember that part okay where they're like do you remember how you got here and i was like no and then they said open up your phone maybe we can figure out how you got here uh and then sure enough there's like a an uber notification saying would you like to rate your driver kind oh, of thing. Yeah. oh okay okay um so immediately i was terrified but then after, you know, after they leave and a couple minutes go by, I really start looking at you and you are just like not talking. Like your mouth is shut, mm -hmm. which is very unusual because you're a mouth breather. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you are. I mean, you are. Yeah. So I, I was just like, well, that's weird. I was like, can you say anything? And you could not say a word. Like It even, was very hard. Even when you're drunk, you still like, you still talk to me. It's yeah. just very mumbled, incoherent, yeah. whatever. Um, your eyes are like blown. Um, pupils. Yeah. And it was just, it was weird. Like you just, you weren't sweaty. Like you were usually when you're like drunk. Mm -hmm. It was very dry, very dry skin. I know that's like a hit or miss with, uh, with, you know, these roofies, but it just seemed very weird. So I was asking some of my, um, my nursing friends the day after and, um, one of them actually has experience with this drug. Mm. And he was just like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like somebody slipped something into your drink. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe, I mean, I know somebody handed it to me, but perhaps maybe it wasn't meant for me. I don't know. I don't know what to think. And, you know, seeing that it was a, a work related event, um, I find it hard to believe that somebody in there that works for the company that I work for would mm -hmm. do something like this. And um, and then later I come to find out that people that didn't work for the company were also there, like yeah. friends of the uh, of the bartenders. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I guess I'm still a hot piece of ass. You are. <laughs> <laughs> that somebody wanted to <laughs> to you know 
but shut um, down and yeah another thing is that usually when you wake up after drinking you are like hungover everything hurts you know the the light just makes you just like yeah with a huge migraine yeah there was none of that you popped up out of bed like nothing had ever that had ever happened yeah you, you were just like ready to go I was like, right that's, that's so so weird that's another thing and, and you know well well I'll say this, you know, for the rest of that following day, I didn't make it into work for obvious reasons. I mean, I, I didn't even have a car because I left it in Hollywood. Yeah. And so I, um, I, I couldn't keep food down. That's for sure. Like I was just throwing everything up until like maybe 6 p.m. Uh, when I had a couple slices of pizza. But um, yeah, the cautionary tale to everybody. I've never had this happen in my entire life, even in my wildest like college days. Right. Did I ever black out like this? Um, and then everything that you're telling me and then, you know, the random person giving me a drink that, that's, uh, that I didn't know that I thought was just, oh, cool. He was just being nice. Um, it, everything points to somebody, to, to, to fuckery. Right. And um, I can't help but just think what would have happened if there was an agenda behind this. Yeah. And I, oh my God, I was super scared. And I was really pissed that you know i wasn't there to like take you home that was not your fault well right because none of us knew that this was going to happen yeah but you know we all we both knew you weren't going to make it you you had you have work you have shit to do true but i mean i wish somebody would have like called me oh after the fact yeah well i mean what, what 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 do you they did what they had to do. They put me in an Uber yeah. in good faith that I was going to make it home. No, I mean, and I really appreciate that. I mean, yeah. it's just, I mean, what could I have done? Nothing. I don't think there's anything anybody could have done except for that motherfucker not putting something in my drink. I'm going to start putting that color changing nail polish on you. So the, this is this is for girls, yeah. but it's also for guys or whoever wants so to like wear it. Is it like a clear coat? It is a, it is, I think. It's a color changing like nail I, or nail polish. I can't remember if it's like a fake nail yeah. or the actual polish. Okay. But if you dip it in your drink and it changes color. The nail or the drink? If you dip your nail in the drink, it's like a test. It's like a litmus but test. But what changes color? The, the, the nail, nail or the, okay. the nail? Okay. If it changes to a certain color, then there's something in the drink that's not alcohol. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, um, yeah, that exists. So, I mean, you know, just a cautionary tale, like I said, to everybody listening right now, be careful. Uh, I'm sure to all our lady listeners, this isn't anything new, but I mean, it it really would impact anybody. Like nobody is safe from this kind of fuckery happening. And so, um, you know, luckily I made it home. I'm alive. I made it. I'm here. We're potting. And uh and, you know, uh, just words of the wise, do not take a drink from somebody that you don't know. It's just my, no. that was just my idiotic, just trusting that this guy was just handing me a drink. Thank goodness. Like nothing happened to you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot could have happened. I don't remember anything. That's so, like, you always remember everything. I do. I know. I Even at my most drunk. Um, and that, this wasn't that. I wasn't that drunk. I wasn't that drunk. <laughs> He's not that drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I am I'm fucking glad that you are safe, dude. Yeah. And then, you know, the following day, um, I, you know, when I could get some food, you know, and then I, on Friday night, I went to the other uh, work event. That was fun. I didn't drink at all that day. We went to Pink's to get some dogs, some mm-hmm. hot dogs. Mm-hmm. That was delicious because I haven't had Pink's in forever. Uh, and then we went to go pick up my my car that was in Hollywood there. So, um, and the following day, I had I played with my own band. So I was very busy musically. Uh, but man, what a story that I've never thought I was ever going to experience anything like that ever. How are you doing right now? I'm good. I'm good. I mean, that next day, I was kind of I was a little zombified. I mean, I was active, but even people were just like, "You look." Like I had like a thousand mile stare kind of thing because mm-hmm. I guess there was a little bit of disbelief of what I what apparently just happened, uh, a little bit of embarrassment from not being able to make it into work, 
Um, and a little bit of a shame of like, man, like just telling myself, the fuck are you taking drinks from somebody you don't know for, oh, you know? Man. So there was just like a lot happening in my head where I'm like, uh, I was very, um, I was just pontificating on a lot. That, that entire day. Wow. And so, uh, but now I'm good. I'm good. You know, t- time heals all. So I, I um, it just, it's just a very important lesson that I learned. I thought that, uh, and I thought that I'd bring it up here on the pod because uh, shit like this happens every day to people mm-hmm. and you got to be careful. And so don't, don't, don't do that guys. I don't recommend it. No. Yeah. <sighs> Glad. But uh, okay. but we're here, man. We're here, uh, and uh, and we're potting, and we're talking about happy shit now. So uh, we're you know Thanksgiving is upon us again. We're right. gonna have the friendsgiving. That's gonna be awesome. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have a lot of friends, uh, a lot of friends of the show. I think Josh is making it over unless he fakes some kind of illness again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, I coughed it through my yeah. neck. <laughs> I coughed it through out my back. He would. I think he has used that excuse before, actually. Oh my god! Um, and yeah, and so, uh, and then you know, the whole, the real Thanksgiving is going to happen. Speaking of, you know, every year uh, for the podcast, we take a break after Thanksgiving. Now, I know this year and even last has been a little different because we've been taking multiple breaks with you being in school and mm-hmm. not being really uh, available to come on. And pod because you have a lot to study for. You got a lot going on. Right. And so, you know, I want to respect that. Uh, but, you know, we're still going to take our normal break um, that, that we take between, what would you say, between like Thanksgiving and Christmas? Yeah, just about. And then and we have one or two last ones in December to just say peace out to 2024. And then we'll come back in like the second or third week of January. Yeah. We usually break for maybe like a month. Yeah. Yeah. More or less. So, um, so yeah, Steph, uh, you got a trivia game? Yeah, I got a Thanksgiving trivia game. Should I, uh, here, let me... Do you have... Do you have God, that always <laughs> happens. All right. Put it on your bingo card. Yeah. All right. What do you got? Okay. I have 10 questions for you regarding Thanksgiving. Okay. Number one, what is the name of the container shaped like a horn that is historically known for holding fruit and placed on the dinner table. That would be a cornucopia. Correct. All right. It is also called the horn of plenty and was a symbol of abundance and nourishment. Do you know how to spell that? What, cornucopia? Yeah. Is that is this going to be on the test? It's, this is the test. Oh, fuck. All right. Uh, let's see. C-O-R. Uh-huh. N-U-C-O- P P I A? Ooh, almost. There's only one P. One P. God damn it. Yeah. Because of the way I say cornucopia, I thought that the U was an A. Because I don't know how to spell. Corn- and I say things differently. Corn- cornucopia. You made fun of the way I said sandwich the other day. How do you say how do you say sandwich? I said sandwich. You said sandwich. <laughs> That's how. The, <laughs> did you notice that that's how the penguin said it? Well, we'll get a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Anyway, okay. What is an adult female turkey called? Oh, fuck. A hen. Oh, <gasps> you're right. All right. Hey, look at that. Um, what should the internal temperature of a turkey be cooked to for safe eating? Internal temperature. I don't know. It's a bird. I just make it. It's like chicken. It's the same temperature. 180 degrees? Uh, 165. Okay. Yeah. I was close. Okay. In fact, if it was at 180, then it's well done. And it's safe to eat. Or did I just burn it? You just, you just, now it's dehydrated. Uh, It's burnt. All right. Okay. What state raises the most turkeys? You got 50 of them to choose from. Well, it's not Hawaii. It's not Alaska. I don't think they could survive in Alaska. Um, Bible Belt State, maybe. But people forget that California just has a sh- shit ton of farmland. I'm going to go with California. 
It's Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, they can survive in the snow. Yeah, sure. I mean, they're usually indoors anyway. Don't you know? Go ahead. Anyway, what Thanksgiving vegetable was grown in space? There was a Thanksgiving vegetable grown in space. I don't know if you would. I mean, it has to be a a type of potato or a root vegetable. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that's correct. A potato. A potato. All right. Just like in The Martian. Yeah. That's where I got my potato idea from. Potatoes. Yep. And poop. So, what question is this? Uh, six. So I've, I'm I'm one. I'm four for one. Four for. You missed two. I've missed two? Yes. Oh. You missed the temperature one and the state one. All right, Minnesota. All right, moving on to some football questions. What NFL team has the most uh, wins, loss on Thanksgiving Day? You don't need to know, like, the ratio. You just got to tell me the team. Well, the Cowboys always play on Thanksgiving, so I'm going to say the Cowboys. Ooh, that is incorrect. What? It is the Detroit Lions. Followed by the Cowboys, Bears, and then the Packers. Do you have any stats on this? The Detroit Lions, 37-45-2. Cowboys, 33-22-1. Bears, 20-15-1. Packers, 15-20-2. and two. That's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, what, NFL te- <laughs> what NFL team has never played on Thanksgiving? What NFL team has never played on Thanksgiving? It's got to be maybe one of the newer expansion teams. Um, I'm going to go with... And there's just one? There's just one. Out of all the teams? Well, yeah, according to ESPN, at least the article that I read, I hope it's not too old. And then you and know. they just played last year, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, I mean, there's over thirty of them, so just, you know, just pick one. But make it a good guess, um, educated guess. Just because I just don't like them, I'm gonna go with the Raiders. That's incorrect. Oh. Is the Jaguars? I would have never picked the Jaguars. Fuck. <laughs> They're the one team. Jacksonville, huh? That has never played on Thanksgiving. Fucking Florida. I swear to God. <laughs> All right. Okay. What is... This one's probably really easy. What is another name for the three-bird roast? The Traducan. Correct. And that's a, a chicken inside of a duck inside of a turkey. Yes. That's crazy. How long do you think that takes to make? It probably takes like at least six hours. Unless you fry it. Because I think that was the whole John Madden thing where like he he was frying it. Oh, really? So like if you dip that shit in there, it really cooks it nice. faster. I mean, that's just the right. You know, that, that just, that's just what happens. I've only fry. ever had a fried turkey once. And it was like the best turkey I've ever eaten. Very flavorful. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just... Um, and you know they make those tabletop fryers now, but back in the day when you had to do it like in your on your driveway because of the whole all the hazards that potentially can you know, you could bring your house down. I think you took me like long long time ago when we first started dating. You to took somebody's me your, house. Yeah, and they had a couple of fried turkeys. It was a friendsgiving, a very unorganized friendsgiving. Like people were just showing up and leaving at random. Randomly, um, because. It was very unorganized because the only thing to eat was that fucking turkey and just a shit ton of beer and alcohol. <laughs> like nobody coordinated. All right. It's going to be like a potluck situation. You bring this. You bring that. It was just like show up to a friend's giving. We're making a fried turkey and everybody just brought beer. Yeah. Everybody just brought alcohol. And there was just that one thing to eat. And everybody just got a little bit. It was tasty. It, it What was funny was that there was not even any like plates or utensils. You no. just had to like grab and go. Yeah, it and, was. It was. But I still, re- I still remember that. It was good. That, that was the, t- the fried turkey I had and I just never forgot it. It was really good. Yeah. On point. Um, 
Anyway, the Turduncan, the origin of it is uncertain. Could be Spanish, could be Cajun. Um, it's also known as a three bird roast in England. There are also traditions of a five bird roast. Jesus. Which is, it starts off with a sausage inside a pigeon. That's not a bird. No, but I mean, there's there's five birds. So let me get to it. Oh, is the sausage <clears throat> made out of birds, maybe? No, the sausage is made out of pork. It starts with sausage. Okay. Stuffed in a pigeon, that is stuffed into a pheasant, mm. chicken, turkey, and goose. Mm. I've never had pigeon. Isn't that like the rat of the skies? Aren't they like swimming with disease? Ye- well, not all of them. No. Just got to clean them properly, I guess. I mean, like the... I guess if you raise the pigeon. They're farmed. Oh. You can do farmed ones, right? Pheasants. Never, I can't imagine what that tastes like, though. Probably very gamey. I Probably. don't know. Have you ever had a Cornish game hen? Probably like that. <sighs> yeah. I've, I've had quail, too. That's very tasty. Yeah. Quail is very good. Uh, I guess you just got to know how to season it. Uh, yeah. Just fry it. Deep fry it. Okay. Last one. What is the purpose of the Macy's Day Parade? Uh, fuck. To promote Macy's? <laughs> no. It is incorrect. Oh. It is an event to welcome in the holiday season. Ah. And this year, you can watch it from 8.30 to noon Not on Thanksgiving that. Day. I never watched it. It's probably the most boring parade you can watch. It's the it's the balloon parade. The that's what yeah that's what they're known for like the giant balloons rather than the floats like the ones that california does so well yeah it's a boring parade i hate it because they're in new york i've never i've never watched an entire macy's day parade in its entirety ever yeah it's I'm, just i tune in i see what's going on and then i tune out I- immediately but santa closes down the parade this is also why i hate it <laughs> It's not even Christmas yet. Uh, did I no. win? I mean, I think you got a little bit more than half. <laughs> bitches. D's make degrees. C's make degrees. Whatever, I got a D. How much did I get? How, mu- how many right you... did I get, actually? Oh, actually, okay. Let me tell, let me tell these up. You got okay. one, two, three, four... Five. You got five. Out of? Ten. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, that's a, that's uh, it's, uh, yeah, 50%. <laughs> oh, man. Fail. All right. All right. Well, um, <laughs> you want to just move forward here with geeking out? <laughs> Let's not talk about this again. what (laughs) so our friends in canada uh matter of fact uh well let me let me just do this pizza hut and playstation (gasps) have not exactly joined forces but there's somebody in canada who just gave the uh, the PlayStation console a huge upgrade. So they've released, um, I guess, a, a file for your 3D printer so that you can 3D print a, uh, a pizza warmer that goes on your PlayStation. So it's like a skin. No, it sits on top of the PlayStation. Huh. Now... I'm going to play this so that you could just see it. Um, Nobody watching this is going to be able to see it, but you can, I got this off of Nerdist and, um, and it's the pizza warmer and warmer is spelled W R M R. Uh, So here, and it's on their Instagram here on uh, pizza hut Canada. So here it's just going to be music, but uh, this way you can at least see what's going on here. 
the hottest console upgrade is here. And it looks legit. It looks like a fucking, like a pizza. Like, no, it's, it's a pizza box. It's a pizza box. Using the heat from your console to warm your pizza while you play. No fucking way. Look how smoky. And, and you put a little tin foil in there. Gaming pizza science. So this this is a actual working pizza warmer. Yes. <gasps> so the pizza warmer works by using the heat exhaust of the PlayStation 5 to keep your pizza and cheese sticks toasty. In the model, there is a tunnel that channels the heat of the warm air pipe to the pizza. However, note that you can't buy this gadget in stores. Instead, Pizza Hut has given users the 3D printing instructions to create the product by themselves. Um, I like I like this sentence right here on Nerdist. I don't have my own 3D printer, so I'm a little disappointed that I won't be able to test this product myself. But I do say, but I do have something called a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that can keep my pizza warm but all jokes aside um uh, not really i wouldn't want to get up to where my console was to go get pizza and then get my greasy hands all over my controllers um but i like i like this part too oh my god that's it that is what they should fix next. Nasty pizza grease on controllers because that oily shine ne seems to never leave once it's on there. That is so true. Have yeah. you ever handled a, a, a remote, even from like the old Nintendo uh, yeah. controllers and you got something greasy on it? That shit is never coming off. Yeah. I, yeah. I play games all the time. So it just, it's something that we have to deal with. But you see how it sits on top of that? That's, that's got, that's ingenuity right there. Damn. We're living in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it's so annoying to like walk up to the console because you're sitting like 10, 15 feet away, depending uh, on, you know, the size of your room. Yeah. Because you need to have a space between you and the TV and the console is usually under the TV. Yeah. You can just get up and walk over. Well, I mean, if you, if you were in the middle of like a quest and you needed like a quick bite, I can see how that would be pretty cool because mm -hmm. you just, you know, pop the lid over and it's like, oh, give me a mozzarella stick, whatever. Yeah. Um, but also then you got to like, use the shirt or if you have a napkin lightly dust off those fingers and then, uh, proceed and to put the grease back on the, <laughs> <laughs> the controller. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I wanted to just quickly discuss is that I, you know, y did you watch Andor? I did. I really liked it. And you really liked it. Okay. I only saw the first episode. I, 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 I know. I know. I like. I, I. I've been meaning to just finish it. Um, it. One of the best reviewed Star Wars things in the last probably what, decade. Yeah, it's uh, in it's, a while. It's right on par with uh, Rogue, one. Rogue One, which is which Rogue One kind of led into this, right? Because Andor, the guy, he, wasn't he in Rogue One? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. The same characters. So season two trailer is out. Um, and, uh, people are excited about it. Is this supposed to be the last of it? Wait, I'm sorry. Did you say Rogue One led into this? Didn't it? No. You don't remember what happened at the end of Rogue yeah, One? Yeah, everybody died. But didn't we meet this guy in Rogue One? Yes. But this series is supposed to be before that. Oh. Because they all died at the end of the moon. Because they all died at the end of the Okay. <laughs> Took me a while. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That didn't sound right. All right, and then so at, by the end of season two, it leads into Rogue One. That's what it's supposed to... Oh, this is the last yeah, season. Yeah, it's the last season, because okay. after this well, is the, the events of Rogue... That makes sense now, because I'm reading this, and I'm like, oh, because I don't know. Because I, I haven't seen season one, so I don't, I don't, I don't know these things. Yeah. Um, so get excited, I guess, because um, the, uh, the, the Empire is really kicking it kicking it a, 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 up a, a few notches with there just being stormtroopers everywhere and like it's just there's no like people just don't have a choice but to either just take it or rebel and obviously you know rogue one ends up being that that, that rebellion man if there's on such a lockdown it's mm -hmm. crazy nice kind of reminds you of a certain point of history <laughs> <laughs> let's hope that never happens again hmm. Hmm. 
And then lastly, Steph, and I know you have something after this, but right, right, right. Um, you know, we just finished watching Penguin. How'd you like it? Loved it. I loved it. I, you know, if uh, if there isn't a freaking Emmy won in a, any shape or form, either the actors or the series itself, I'm gonna makeup, be pissed. costume. Oh my god, the set. Yeah, amazing. It was great. Great. I, um, you know, kudos to uh, to the studio here for for making this. Um, I was skeptical. And in fact, uh, IGN, I think just before its release, uh, Gate was already giving Penguin like a six or a seven or some shit like that, which is very underwhelming. But, um, you know, IGN also they they tend to be like very like much naysayers about things that people should normally be pretty hyped up about well especially when it comes to games like they underrate games right a lot so uh from my understanding at least well that's why i never really listen to the reviews i'm just like well let me see for myself how good it is steph but even then your reviews are very questionable <laughs> morbius was a good movie. god damn it <laughs> morbius was not a good movie <laughs> but i crossed the line at my damn web I've never even seen. Have you even seen Madame Web? No. How would you know? Because the trailers. Oh, my God. (laughs) All right. Anyway. (laughs) So for those who haven't seen Penguin, um, we don't see Batman in there. Uh, I mean, the closest thing that we get to Batman is the bat signal at the end of the um, of the last episode. Uh, If that's a spoiler, go fuck yourself. But everybody is probably wondering where the hell is Batman during the events of the Penguin? Because there's some things that happen that are that, you know, everybody in Gotham City is aware of. I mean, at, at a certain point, there's a bomb that goes off underground. And, you know, that that kind of destroys like a city block. Um, so they asked Matt Reeves. And uh, the answer that he gave is this uh, quote. This was a time of great turmoil in the city. It's literally the week after what happened in the Batman. Much of the city is in desperation, so police can't get everywhere. Uh, there's crime everywhere. It's very, it's a very, very dangerous time. Batman's out there trying to grapple with the aftermath of everything that happened, which to some degree he blames himself for. In short, the fallout of the Riddler destroying the seawalls and flooding the city, uh, Bats had his hands full. He simply wasn't paying close attention to the mafia war going on in the wake of Carmine Falcone's death. Reeves also reminded fans that the Penguin all takes place mere weeks after the events of the Batman. Remember, the Batman began on Halloween and lasted roughly through early November when the Gotham City elections were taking place. The Penguin takes place after that, but clearly before winter sets in. Regardless, Oz Cobb and Batman will come face to face again, only this time it will happen on the big screen. Colin Farrell has already confirmed that he will appear in the Batman Part 2, which will arrive in 2026. Which I guess kind of makes sense. And you know, there was another fan theory, and obviously this isn't coming from Matt Reeves, which is like who's the producer of the, the Penguin. But I, I also like this that I read at somewhere. I forget where I read it, but... Um, this fan theory was saying, well, I think he's he's taking time to um, to focus on being Bruce Wayne because, you know, when Batman is developed, he is able to really balance both very well. He's got to run Wayne Enterprises and he's got to be Batman at night. So um, he's probably establishing himself and Wayne Enterprises as being like the CEO of Wayne Enterprises and right. focusing on being that person. Um, and and yeah, and he's probably having a hard time grappling with what the hell the, uh, the, uh, the Riddler did. Let's not forget that in historically in the No Man's Land story, he does go missing for quite some time. And then you see all of these gangs start making their territories Mm -hmm. and then eventually he has to you know round them up gcpd goes through a whole change um but like you said he is trying to figure out who he is because uh the batman we got in the batman would you say what he's like in year two or three 
Was that ever discussed? That's definitely like a year one Batman. Like he's fresh into it. Yeah. And that's probably why he's having such a hard time just psychologically dealing with it. I mean, that's why he was such a downer of a Batman. You know, um, he's seeing, he's trying to just grapple with it. And hopefully he he's not that depressed anymore. And he's more able to focus on things that are, you know, and prioritize things that are most important uh, in what, that storyline. What um, Batman does historically is he uses like his weakness to his advantage. Which is what? Which is, you know, just trying to figure out. Um, oh, damn it. What was I going to say? Forget about it. I lost my train of thought. All right. <laughs> we have been drinking. What are we drinking here, Steph? We are drinking this apple what? apple pie moonshine, and I bought it for Thanksgiving. But I was looking at it on the dinner table because I put it there. And you just it. looked at me and just, just like, I don't think I could wait. I don't think I could wait for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so we cracked it open, <laughs> and here we are. And it's what like forty something percent alcohol. Yeah, it's like thirty five. Oh, but we're 35. only drinking like a really little bit, but it's still like pretty strong for us. Anyway, Batman is really struggling to find himself. And he tries to figure out who his opponents are. But I think that's one of like, it's also an advantage for him, but he also spends too much time doing it. Yeah. So hurry up, (laughs) hurry up and get the bad guys. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's going to, I guess part two is what I'm hearing is going to happen is that he's, he's going to encounter the Grayson's and, He's going to take Robin under his wing and that's going that story is also going to develop in the middle of all this. Yeah. So I'm um, interested to see how that plays out. I hope that they don't deviate too much from the storylines that have already been established and the they material don't material is already written. It's already there. Just give us that on the big screen because that's the only thing that the public has really accepted. In the entire history of the Batman, just go, uh, like, just have him attend the fucking circus, the Graysons die, and then there's this kid. Right. Yeah, and he, and he takes him in. Um, all right, and you had something, uh, you, you had a bulletin, well, what do you got there, Steph? I have some not-so-family-friendly movies that you can watch this Thanksgiving. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so we can't watch this when the family is over for Thanksgiving. They're all okay. adults. I'm not watching, like, a snuff film with them. First of all, ew. Okay. <laughs> Please don't watch those. Um, secondly, uh, no. These are not it. Yeah. The first movie I have for you is called Black Friday. This was released in 2021. Um, and it stars Bruce Campbell and Devon Sawa. And here is the Rotten Tomatoes synopsis. On Thanksgiving night, a group of disgruntled toy store employees begrudgingly arrive for work to open the store at midnight for the busiest shopping day of the year. Meanwhile, an alien parasite crashes to Earth in a meteor. Oh, shit. <laughs> this group of misfits led by store manager Jonathan, Bruce Campbell, uh. and longtime employee Ken, Devon Sawa, soon find themselves battling against hordes of holiday shoppers who have been turned into monstrous creatures hell-bent on murderous rampage on Black Friday. Wow, okay. That took Does a it, turn right? real quick. Yeah. I mean, this actually sounds pretty fun. Yeah. It's listed as a holiday horror sci-fi comedy. Okay. <laughs> and, it's, and it's fresh at 65. Nice. All right. That sounds fun. All right. I'll look for that. Next one is Jim Henson's Turkey Hollow, released in 2015. <laughs> it just looks creepy. It's listed as a comedy drama at 60% fresh. Yeah, you got like these creepy looking Muppets. I guess they're supposed to be turkeys, but they, man. That is not a turkey. I don't know what those are. That thing with a beard? It says, it's not a turkey. It says Turkey's Hollow, so I'm assuming that these are turkeys. Okay. The Emerson What's the synopsis? The Emerson family heads to the quaint town of Turkey Hollow to visit Aunt S- Cly? Sly. Tim and Annie quickly grow bored without the internet. Shocking. And <laughs> and soon try to track the hollowing ho- the hollowing hoodoo, an elusive monster the locals dismiss as a legend. That's it. So it's not a turkey, it's a hoodoo. 
<laughs> it's just fresh as fuck. <laughs> okay. This one seems more it's it's PG, so yeah, this one's for kids. It's just weird. Okay. Uh and also might be terrifying to them. The next one we have is Thanksgiving, released in twenty twenty three. Uh white meat. Dark meat. No, no, no. All will be carved. That's not it. That's not the one? This is Thanksgiving. Right. By Eli Roth. Oh yeah, this is the one. Yeah, this is the oh, one. Shut up. <laughs> this is this is a holiday horror mystery and thriller and comedy. Originally introduced to us as a fake trailer on in Grindhouse. Oh, that's Quentin right. Tarantino's Grindhouse. That's where that quote came from. And then okay. Eli Roth did that, and he's like, "White meat, dark meat, all will be carved." And everybody's like, "When are you making this movie?" And then he finally made the movie that came out in uh, what. 2023. 2023. I mean, it only took him like almost 15 years to do it. After Black Friday. will come home in the holidays in a body <laughs> bag. <laughs> after Black Friday, right? <laughs> after a Black Friday riot ends in tragedy, a mysterious Thanksgiving inspired killer terrorizes Plymouth, Massachusetts, the birthplace of the holiday. Hmm. Picking off residents one by one, what begins as a random revenge killings are soon revealed to be part of a larger sinister holiday plan. Will the town uncover the killer and survive the holidays or become guests at his twisted holiday dinner table? Dang. It's so, 84%. Oh, so mm -hmm. it was good. Mm -hmm. It is good. All right. The audience liked it too. We'll watch it. The audience is at 79. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Then we have my favorite one that I must watch every year. Oh, God. Thanks, Killing. <laughs> Came out in 2019. It's only an hour and 25 minutes, and it's listed as a horror comedy. Remember uh, when it, we were first exposed to this uh, on when it was on Netflix, and um, the first scene is so ridiculous. It, it opens up on a, on a pair of tits, right? It's just a pair of giant tits. And, and it's and then it zooms out and it's like this pilgrim woman running for her life and then at the end when when she when the thing that's chasing her finally catches up to her it's this puppet turkey thing clearly a puppet <laughs> he's like nice tits bitch and then he just slices her open and kills her the best opening scene <laughs> of a holiday movie <laughs> fight me jesus christ Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> a possessed turkey terrorizes five college students during Thanksgiving break. That's it. Oh, great Jesus, son of Mary, wife of Joseph. <laughs> it is so bad, it didn't even get a rating. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, the audience rated it. 42%. Jesus Christ. <laughs> is that all of them? <laughs> Those are the four movies I have for you. One is... You know, for kids because it's PG. The oh, other one. Jesus Christ, no. Lord, Savior, and, and Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all the Jesus Christ I think I have. <laughs> uh, well, cool. You have anything else? No, that was it. All right, all right. Well, um, that's that's gonna that's gonna do it. Oh, I got to play the outro to this. Here we go. No! Well, Steph. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, now. Thanksgiving is not next week. No. It's not for what? Another two weeks? Is that um, right? We have like... It's next Thursday. Not this Thursday. I like... Uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. Shut the fuck up. Because, uh, you know... We, yeah, we have... <laughs> we, it's a little bit less than two weeks. Like a little over a week and a half. A weekend, one, two, the, three, the 28th. four. The 28th. Yeah. Four days. Yeah. Ten days. Um, all right, cool. Well, uh, thank y'all uh, for listening into the Food Bar Show, and a special thanks to you, Foos, to subscribe, rate, review, and share the pod with your fellow Foos. Remember to follow, like, and comment on our Instagram and TikTok at Food Bar Show. That's F double O Bar Show, and listen at F double O Bar Show dot com, and we'll fill it up like a couple of Foos. Ah! I've been Josie, and I'm Steph. Signing off saying, don't be a dick! Woo!
fuck, man. Thank you, guys. Which anime fan base has the most glazers? Absolutely 100% One Piece, okay? How are you gonna sit through a thousand episodes but you can't sit through a f***ing homework assignment? Every single person I know who watches One Piece could not get into their local state school. How do you commit to a thousand episodes of that bull****? You don't commit to reading a book or talking to a woman, okay? Watching One Piece next to an android is the biggest form of male birth control. Like, that's like worse than Harry Potter adults. One thing worse than an adult that's read the same seven books over and over is the adult that watches the same f***ing show about the same f***ing pirates not finding a piece for what? Six different presidents by now? How many fiscal quarters have passed? What was the S&P at when One Piece started? What is it at now? Do something else. Is it a waste of time, you think? Agreed, just a waste of time. There's so many more things to be watching. Look at this convention. Do you know how many people go to this convention? They're like, oh my God, I can't wait to go to the f One Piece booth. How do you wake up every day at 7 a.m.? Get your ass in line to go to the same booth that's at the same convention for again since at least when bush was president okay i'm pretty sure there were two towers when one piece started when did the, i'm like okay i'm over it watch something else